Hi, Spring fans. Welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. You know, I've I found it usually true that if I want to do something interesting and it's not already got good support, I, I can just sit around and wait and eventually the spring team will make it work for me and then I don't have to do anything, which is great because I, I still get the paycheck uh, and yet and yet I'm not doing the work, which is great. And so this is another example of of that happening to me. I was looking to do to do I wanted to use gRPC and, you know, what was that like? And uh, uh, I figured I could just do a little discussion around gRPC. And then and then I was like, oh, OK, well, this is. Oh, I don't want to. I don't. This looks like work. So I I, I started to use the uh, gRPC Spring Boot starter that I found that was it looks pretty interesting, but it was tied to Spring Boot 2.0. And uh, and then so I just kind of waited. And then the good Dr. Dave Sire was nice enough to to sort of get it fixed for me. And at least at least it looks, it looks good to me. Basically, it looks really nice. So um, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at that support. It works in Spring Boot 3 now. And, uh, and we'll see if we can build ourselves a simple service. Obviously, I'll do the normal things. I'll go here, start that Spring Grail. I'm going to choose Maven. I'll create a service. I don't really need anything else, right? This is There's no gRPC support up here, but we can go ahead and create a simple application. And we're going to open this up, obviously, in our ID. And uh, the, the whole point here is that there is a Spring Boot starter provided by the community, so I don't have to do a lot of work. There's actually a fair bit of configuration that goes into the build file itself. So this is a stock standard Spring Boot app. I want to use the, you know, I'm going to use a a pre-configured example here. So gRPC server, palm.xml. Let's go ahead and open this up in a new text file. And I'm, I'm gonna copy some of the stuff that matters here, right? And we'll explain what's happening. First of all, I want the uh, Spring Boot starter, as well as the dependencies that I need. Okay, so we'll bring that in. Okay, paste that here, good. And we also need some build plugins. And so these build plugins are going to handle you know, we're gonna just replace this this stanza right there. There we go. Let's let's look at the dependencies now. Okay, so this is the Spring Boot starter. It's a net.devh gRPC server Spring Boot starter. There's an, a a mirror dependency for the client. Uh, you need to opt into certain things. I'm gonna bring in gRPC Netty, the latest and greatest as of recording. The Javax annotation API. This is the kind of stuff. Honestly, I wish that the uh, starter would bring for me, but I'm sure there's a reason. Okay, and then and then we're using this plugin. This plugin is actually uh, first of all. Fun fact, this was actually created by my friend uh, and fellow Java champion, Trustin Lee. He's, you, you've heard me talk about him endlessly on this channel, I'm sure. He's the creator of Netty. So if you've ever used anything in the reactive stack in the last seven plus years, it's it, it only works because of, of Netty, you know? there's At some point, you gotta, you, know, you, you gotta remember, most of the scalable Java on the planet uses something that this guy worked on. And then uh, he created this nice little build plugin. This plugin detects information about the operating system and exports that as properties during the compilation, which is nice, okay? We got the GraalVM native image. At this point, I'm not even sure if this is actually necessary, but we'll just leave that in. And then we actually use the protobuf maven plugin to transpile our protobuf definition, our GRP, gRPC protobuf file, which we'll look at in a second, into Java code. And there's some things that we need to specify, which version of the jar do we want to use. And here we're using those exported uh, properties coming from trust motd.maven plugin, right? So these values, the OS detected classifier, et cetera, that's being provided for us by that plugin. We are then using that to tell this other plugin what Pro, you know what proto buff compiler artifact to use okay so it's it's qualified based on the, the operating system because the proto buff compiler is native code it's a binary right okay so we've got this we've got all this together and the result will be that when we run this program it'll automatically compile or transpile rather a protocol a proto buff definition that we have here in our source main proto folder okay so that, what about that definition well i'm going to copy dave's example and dave in turn is copying the sample from the the google you know the, the grpc starter project that i just showed you so here we go copy that desk downloads server source main resources sorry source main proto okay here we go there's this now look, let's look at the definition very simple this is not a protobuf definition look at that i can 
generate requests if I want to. I just click on that and I get like this nice, queer, nice way to interact with it. But OK, I don't care about that. So basically, I'm defining a service with a single RPC endpoint. There are different interaction modalities here, and one of them is RPC. Uh, uh, I'm going to call it the exporting a function in the C Pascal Go style with capital letters. And it in turn has a payload that it, ex it, it accepts and it returns a reply. So hello request, hello reply. So here's the hello request. And the idea behind protocol buffers is that they're inherently versioned, right? You can actually, you can add new fields and older clients will still be able to talk to the older, to the newer service, even if it's using a newer definition, as long as you didn't delete any of the existing fields, right? And so here I've got a field, which one? Well, it's the first one in the payload. It's the first offset, right? So you have to give it ordering. So it's a string, it's got a name and it's field one. Okay. All right. So that's the protocol. Now I want to give some hints to inform how this is compiled into, into a Java class. Okay. So I'm going to use com example service. So I want this to be service proto. Okay. And then we're going to create a hello world proto or greetings proto, whatever. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that. All right, good. So let's go ahead and run the pro run the compilation here, maven package. Let's see what that gives us. Okay, so now we should, if you go to the target directory, you'll see there's a folder here with our Java code in the Java folder, right? So hello request, hello world proto, hello reply, etc. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're creating a service. So I'm going to go here. I'll export this as a service. Okay, GFPC. Did I have to, oh, I have to re-import this, don't I? Make sure IntelliJ sees all the changes service here we go class and then i'm going to call this um, greetings service implements implement base okay so extend that and what am i what am i doing well i'm getting app i have these abstract methods that i need to override and here i actually stub out you know it's got stubs it's been generated at compile time here i'm going to provide a response okay and i can res i can provide the response once and then be done with it like that right so i can say Make, uh, here's a, uh, I'm using the builder that was automatically generated for my types and I'm building up a message and I'm sending that message to the client. I'm sending it just once and then I'm saying I'm done. Now, of course, if I wanted to do streaming, I could do that. If I wanted to do all sorts of different things, I could do that here, but it's, it's very low level. But now you have that, you know, it's just a spring bean, by the way, this, this at gRPC service uh, is just a service. So you can inject things into it. You can do, you can talk to a database. You can do whatever you need to do here, but you, you end up creating an endpoint, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. So maven spring boot colon run. All right, there's the application. It's listening on port 9090. Let's go ahead and invoke it. One of the things I quite like to use is gRPC curl. And if you've got that installed, uh, great. If you don't, you can do this, gRPC curl. Just install that like that. It's already installed. Okay, so I'm going to use that here to make a request. I'm going to say, here's my data. It's, it's kind of like curl. I'm sending the payload as a data to be sent in the request with a name of hi. Okay, and I'm going to call this endpoint. I want the response as plain text, etc. So it's up and running, and we can see how easy it is to invoke it from gRPC curl. Now, let's suppose I wanted to build a client using Java code. Well, that's easy enough to do as well. So let's go here, and I'll just copy and paste this program here. Okay, copy minus R service. I'll move this to a new folder called client. And I'm going to open that up as well. Let me rename it first. Okay, call that client. Okay, idea client pom.xml. Okay, so same basic approach, but we're going to act as a client to that service. So I've already got the protobufs there in my folder because I copied it. I'm basically halfway there. Let's change the build. I'm going to consult my existing definition because again, there's some peculiarities here to be ironed out. Okay, so here's the client build. I'm going to remove that from the copied folder that we had and I'll paste these two in. So I've got the gRPC client Spring Boot Starter as opposed to the server Spring Boot Starter and I've got the JavaX annotation API. All right, everything else is in order. I'm going to leave everything else, including the build plugins down there uh, as they were. I'm going to rename this class to be client application just to keep it simple. Now I need to define how the client talks to our service. So I need to tell it how to find it. So I'll say gRPC client greetings service dot address equals, you know, you can yeah, static localhost 9090, okay? And I'll use the Negotiation type will be plain text. Okay, so I'm defining my service connection there. All right, very good. So now I've got my client application. I am going to want to actually talk to the service. I need to inject a client definition that I can use to talk to the service. So here we go, client runner. I'm gonna inject this. And here we can use this nice convenient annotation. 
uh, and it has to, you know, we're going to inject it in terms of this, right? So there we go. And it'll be simple grpc dot, there we go. I'm going to inject that, return new application runner. Okay, implement that. There's this. And I can say simple blocking sub, say hello. And I can just do same as before, set message, right? Uh, set the name, spring fans. Okay. And I'm going to make that request. I can do all sorts of things here, but uh, that should do, right? I'll just run that. All right. Let's go ahead and run this and see if what we if that works. Oh, I didn't. I did. It ran. It just didn't print anything out because I didn't actually force it to print anything out. There we go. So we got the response back. Hello, Spring fans. So our client and our service are up and running. We're able to do interesting things here. That's really all there is to know. I'm not gonna like. I I, I don't want to belabor the point. This is actually pretty good and easy to use. One thing I noticed is that this is not actually a qualifier annotation, right? And so it's actually doing this by itself somehow. It's it's looking for these parameters and, and injecting the right dependency there, which makes it a little interesting. I, I, there's, a, there's a lower level mechanism there you can tap into, but this is what we're gonna use for most of our stuff. It, it just works fine. Also, I had a devil of a time trying to get this to work in GraalVM. And, and it's, I think it's largely because they're shading, that is to say the repackaging, vendoring some of the dependencies like Netty. So Netty is already GraalVM compatible, but if you change the package, then all the definitions, all the reachability metadata for those types doesn't work. So if that's in your in, in your equation, maybe this isn't the, the right situation for you. Hopefully they'll work on that. I don't know, but I, I, I suspect it's probably not a trivial problem, but it is a it is something that once they figure it out for one, one they can do it for everything, you know? Um, fingers crossed. All right, well, I hope you got something out of it. Thanks for watching as always, and uh, see you next time.